understanding the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, we'll now compare them on these following characters. The first character which is here is position of the ganglia. In case of sympathetic nervous system, all those 21 ganglia on either side, they are joined to form a chain, but they're very close to spinal cord. So each sympathetic trunk, sympathetic trunk, which is having 21 ganglia, and this is on either side. So 21 ganglia in each sympathetic trunk and they are near spinal cord. Whereas in case of parasympathetic nervous system as the preganglionic nerve fiber is very long, those ganglion are either on the surface of the organ or many a times inside the organ. So here we will write that the ganglia are close to the organs and it could be as I said on the surface or just inside the muscle layer. So this is the difference on the basis of where these ganglia are. Now preganglionic nerve fiber. In case of sympathetic nervous system, preganglionic nerve fiber is short whereas in case of Parasympathetic nerve fiber, the preganglionic nerve fiber is long. Now post, just reverse, in case of sympathetic, postganglionic nerve fiber is long and it branches. Here, the postganglionic, because the ganglion is just on the organ, postganglionic fiber comes uh, from that ganglion and it enters the organ. So it is very short. The next point is nature of outflow. That means from which part of the CNS are these fibers originating. So here we, we are talking of the origin. In case of sympathetic, these 21 ganglion which arise to make that sympathetic nerve, they are few from the cervical region, thoracic, lumbar and sacral. But as we said, that most of the ganglia they arise from the thoracic and lumbar region, we call the outflow as thoracico-lumbar. Whereas in case of parasympathetic nervous system, as the fibers arise from some of the cranial nerves and the sacral uh, nerves, that is from the spinal cord. So the origin or outflow is termed as cranio sacral outflow. So this outflow basically means the origin of the fibers. Now neurotransmitter. Sympathetic nervous system, their postganglionic fibers have adrenaline as the neurotransmitter. Whereas in case of parasympathetic, it is acetylcholine. The neurotransmitter and that is why the nerves here are called adrenergic the post ganglionic fibers are called adrenergic whereas in this case the post ganglionic fibers are called cholinergic so these names are given on the basis of the neurotransmitters which they have. Effect. Sympathetic nervous system as the postganglionic fiber is very long, it undergoes branching. And that is why effect which we see of this nervous system is widespread. So sympathetic nervous system shows or has widespread effect. Whereas, in case of parasympathetic, because the postganglionic fiber is very short and it immediately enters into the organ. So, its effect is very local and limited. So, it has limited effect. Now, the last point on which we want to compare these two systems is mode of working. How does it work? Working basically 
is on the basis of the neurotransmitter. So sympathetic nervous system, as we know that it works in all stress situations, it works by expenditure of energy. Here, energy expenditure takes place and it prepares our body for all stress situation. So prepares for stress situations including anger, pain, any kind of stress situation. So this is the uh, system which is actually making us ready for stress situation, how we deal with that stress situation. And the main reason for that is the neurotransmitter. And here expenditure of energy takes place. In case of parasympathetic nervous system, it works by conserving energy. By conserving energy. And this system works when we are in rest. So it brings comfort, calmness when we are in resting position. So this is preparing ourselves in the stress situation and this is maintaining all the activities in the resting stage. So it favors comfort, calmness. This is during rest and rest. And that is why we say that their working is antagonistic. If one is doing something to increase expenditure, the other is doing to conserve that energy. So they work just opposite to each other. But one works in extreme stress condition, other works in normal condition. And both of them work in such a perfect manner that homeostasis or a steady state can be maintained in our body. So this is the comparison which we have seen on the basis of these characters. Now, in the next part, we will see how these systems work on a particular organ like tear glands, peristalsis, bladder, heart rate, blood pressure because their action is totally antagonistic on the same organ. So that we will take up in the next part.